Hello and welcome to Desync Nerds, a Nintendo Switch podcast. This is episode number 12, airing on Sunday the 17th of, op- of December, I almost said October. <laughs> We're your hosts, I am Colin, at Anukshuk on Twitter, I-N-U-K-S-H-U-K 58, and he's Devin on Twitter at K-U-L-A-N-A-H. You can also find this show on Twitter at Desync Nerds. And as you already know, we bring all the latest news and hot topics from around the internet, all Switch related, of course. Uh, just a quick preview. This week we have Capcom actually likes the Switch. Finally, more of our obsession with Square Enix because it's it's pretty pretty big. It's a pretty big obsession. And brief Xenoblade Chronicles updates and more. But first, we have some show news. Devin, what's up? Uh, so I made a Patreon for us. I have been putting. Why? Why? Because games are expensive, and I want I want help. Uh, but also hosting is expensive. Hosting is ridiculously expensive. Anyway, uh. It is. So I've been doing daily headline ra- roundups just as I go through with my morning coffee. I copy and paste them into a little news thingy. Uh, I also want to eventually go on to like a survey of the week, some kind of like just, you know, I don't even know. What was your favorite recent map on Splatoon or just stuff like that just to get What was a your few- favorite spammed line from Xeno- Xenoblade? <laughs> yes, that's actually perfect. You think perfect. you can take me? It's definitely you think you can take me. Uh, don't forget but- about me. The power of friendship, Colin. That's important. In case you forgot that it was an anime, the power of friendship. Um, so yeah, those are the kind of things that I want to start putting on there. So that's there. If you want to follow it, you can do all of that stuff will be free. Um, so that's all up there. But yeah, that's my show news. All right. Well, let's get into our week on gaming. Week in gaming, rather. What have you been doing? Uh, you think you can take me. I've been playing exclusively Xenoblade Chronicles. I'm really... I missed out on, I'm on so the... Sorry. I missed out on Clan Blitz, and I really... Or not missed out, but I did, I've not tried it yet. And I really want to play that, but there are not enough hours in the day. It's just... It's just this is a problem. <laughs> and it's going to get true. worse. This week is really awful for game releases that I care about. And it's just... I need more time. Christmas break is not long enough. Uh, but yeah, that's me. What about you? Uh, I did a little bit more. I, I played through the entire Lost Sphere demo and already pre-purchased the game. Uh, which is probably a mistake because they I, I didn't think they were going to do a physical. They are going to do a physical. So I might end up buying that twice. <laughs> I feel like that's just the um, thing that you do. You just buy games twice. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I don't know why I thought there wasn't going to be a physical of it. I, I found a physical of I Am Setsuna, which also I was playing this week. But whatever. I mean, that's it's not coming out till the like end of January, like the 23rd of January or something like that. So whatever just one more note on the Collins dumb it's a square enix game just throwing that out there square enix is kind of a big name jrpg factory which is basically square enix yeah. and uh and i started my so you can take me run um xenoblade chronicles 2 so far not quite as happy with it as you are but i mean i'll give it i'll give it more time all i have to say is that map is terrible like the map the compass system is just awful but they're going to fix it, or they're going to implement improvements, which we're going to talk about. So that, Whatever that means, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, that's it for me. On to the news. Right, so our news. ARMS is getting a new character and a big patch this year. Devin, what's up? Uh, I mean, that's basically all we know. I'm just more amazed that this game is getting the support that it's getting. I... I mean, I, I've told you about this. I don't know if I've talked about it on the show, but I, I just don't care. I don't care about that game at all. I... Played it for 15 minutes, got my little brother to play it, and we were both like, yeah, that was, that was okay. Let's, uh, let's go do something else. So. That, was, that was one of the launch titles that I wanted to try because it looked so cool, but then you were uh, not so hot on it, so I just passed on it. I mean, really, though, I'm kind of a fighting game purist. Like, I'm real finicky about fighting games that I like, so maybe my yeah, opinion is not. Yeah. yeah, and I like Dissidia, so obviously I don't care. Yeah, exactly. You, you'll play anything, no matter what garbage it is. You'll fight me. Square Enix is God. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't agree. Speaking of... Oh, wait. No, we're not there yet. My bad. Uh, yeah, that's all I got to say about ARMS. All right, so moving along. Fantasy Star Online 2, releasing in Japan, Spring 2018. 
this is one of the or it is a sequel to one of the OG MMOs, as you very rudely pointed out. Because who fact checks? You're so wrong. You don't know anything. So this actually it predates. Wow, it came out a year after EverQuest and three years after Ultima Online. So it's it's very early on, or the original rather was very early on in the MMO world. So, and there's it was a good game. It was enjoyable the little that I played it. So I'm kind of excited for this. <laughs> I've seen gameplay of it and it looks fantastic. It's obviously the, been re revamped. Of the new one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. A fantasy star online two, cloud edition they, or something. They added, they added some like yeah some yeah some tag on the end that makes it unique and it looks really good. It actually kind of reminded me of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles too a little bit like in art style. Yeah, and I mean Xenoblade Chronicles is basically an MMO. So yeah, oh my god, yeah, totally. I love it. It's so good. Anyway, moving along, Square Enix interviews. Why don't I'll let you take this away? So, there was a bunch of stuff here. Uh, I learned that Tokyo RPG Factory is actually a group inside of Square Enix. I thought Square Enix was just publishing some other dev developer, but no, they're, it's literally Square Enix employees. So, uh, that was a fun fact. But they said that they are not influenced by the shape, form, playstyle of the Switch. They're making the games they want to make, and they don't care what console they're putting on. Are, uh... I'm uninformed here. Are Setsuna or Lost Sphere going... Are they Switch exclusives? No, they are not. They're both they're on PS4 as well. Okay. And I th think they're on PC. Mm -hmm. Which was actually also part of this. Square Enix has kind of doubled down on the PC as a relevant platform. And they mentioned this in the interview. So that's so weird to me. As someone who you know played Final Fantasy VII like six years after it released on the PC... As a <laughs> yes, garbage same. port, it was such a bad port. I, it it just, was so bad. So to see them putting a, the the PC as a first party or first uh, first class citizen is the phrase. It's kind of weird. Um. Anyway, Topi Tokyo RPG Factory doesn't care about the Switch in the fact that they're not trying to make experiences for it specifically, which I think is good. I don't, for the most part, you don't really need to rebuild your games for the Switch. It's just not important. It, nothing is really gained. Especially for RPGs. Yeah, for base base JRPG, like what would you even do? It would just come across as gimmicky. So exactly, I agree yeah. with that decision. Uh, the CEO of Square Enix also said that this is more or less Square Enix's um, overarching feel towards the Switch is that they're not really, especially with new games, they're not wanting to create a Switch version. They want to just make it the same port, which I think is good. Again. Um, they also want to port slash enhance all of their whole back catalog. And this phrasing was exciting to me. Uh, his exact quote is, just straight ports isn't cutting it. We need to update those and modernize them to make something that works for modern gamers too. Because he was talking about how, you know, they've got this huge back catalog of, of very beloved titles. I mean, like, I, there are still nerds around today that, that, you know, Final Fantasy VII is literally the best game I've ever played. And eight less so, but still there. So I just want I just want a Final Fantasy Tactics that doesn't like <laughs> drop to ten frames every time I summon Shiva. That's yeah. all. That's all I want. Or Please cast give me a spell. That. Yeah, no, for sure. It, I was so sad about the PSP version because like the phone version was garbage and I expected that, but then the PSP was the exact same edition. I was just gonna say it's like literally copy and paste. Yeah, no, yeah. it was exactly copy and pasted because you got the slowdowns in the exact same spots. It was so dumb. So hopefully they do that with FFT because. I love those games so much. Um, and I'm not sure what they would do with like older games. I, so I've seen some fear about this with like uh, Final Fantasy 3, I think it was, got remade for the DS. I think it was the... Which, which 3? Real 3? Like the, the four kids 3? I don't even know. I, I can't keep that straight. I still don't understand it. Um, but anyway, one of them got remade for the DS and it got brought into 3D graphics, kind of like I Am Setsuna look, look, that look alike. And that means a lot of angry nerds. So, I, I, okay, so if, if it's the three like actual the, uh, that I think are t talking about, where they made it 3DS, 3D, mm -hmm. brought it into like whatever, I played that and I really liked it. They actually did that with 4 2 as well, um, rather. Uh, uh, 2 here, 4 real life. And they did. They gave it the same treatment, and I mm. thought that was also really great. I can't believe people were angry about that. 
I mean, they just want sprites for everything for always. Like, I'd love to see six and seven get that treatment as well. Yeah, seven is seven. I agree with. I don't. I I have a soft spot in my heart for sprites. I really like sprites. I uh, I'm actually a little angry at like the Street Fighter series when they move from sprites to 3D because I think the 3D <laughs> looks like garbage, and the sprites are just sprites are timeless. Well, you, you either you either double down on sprites or you you try to combat uncanny valley and sometimes you lose yeah a lot of people lose and i mean yeah like final fantasy 7 is a great game but no one's going to look at that game in 30 years and say that was a really pretty game but you can you can actually do that with like i think that uh street fighter alpha 3 is actually one of my favorite art style sprite games from and it's you know it's i don't actually have any idea when that was released but in the, the 90s so and that's just 3D technology is always going to get better, and it's always going to look dumb in the past. Sprites look good. They just look good. Um, yeah. Speaking of sprite updates... Uh, you ready for, for Romancing Saga news? Yeah. Romancing Saga 2, which still uses sprites, is going to be released at 20% off from 25 bucks to 20 bucks. I meant to put the date in there. I believe that's through January, but... I'm forgetting off the top of my head. I intended to copy and paste. Anyway, so yeah. Like it's an ongoing sale? Yeah, it's an ongoing sale for like a month or something. Um, oh, man. So how sold are you on this game already then? I, as we'll get through at the end of the show, I have, what is this, six games that are releasing this week, and I want literally every single one of them five games. I, 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 don't, I don't have time. I don't have time. I, I've also got this 100-hour JRPG epic that I'm trying to play behemoth yeah yeah exactly so i i do really want to play it and it, it it really sounds like an amazing game but i just don't i don't have time but that uh, is one game well, that's doing sprites and it looks great and it'll always look great so yeah when are we getting when are we getting octopath because that's also sprites but that's like two and a half d hd that looks really good yeah that's uh i think that's we're still 2018 on that we don't know anything else so oh okay 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 yeah Anyway, keeping in the JRPG saga train, except a little bit different, Dragon Quest Builders release date and box art has been released. So, March 1st in Japan. We have no NA news, and it makes me really scared because I don't think this is actually confirmed for an NA release. So, I want this game oh, so really? bad. Oh, yeah. That's sad. Yeah. Um, but it's releasing in Japan on the 1st. They'll have a demo on, the, on March 1st, sorry. There will be a demo releasing on February 1st, again in Japan. It's going to be 4,800 yen, which is about $42. And yeah, there's no NA news. Traditionally, Dragon Quest games have come to the US. I think that we've had like one or two out of their 13 title series that hasn't. So I have high hopes, but also this is... Well, no, this is, this is basically Minecraft. So it'll definitely come to NA. Done. I mean, and even if it doesn't, it's not like it's a region locked. You just have to have a Japanese account on your Switch, so you can still get it. You just will miss out on the dialogue, probably. Yeah, but it's an action RPG. Like, who cares it, about dialogue? It, yeah, I was gonna say it's it's a Minecraft like. So, what dialogue are you really missing, if any? It'll just be the the uh, the battle screams. Will be in Japanese <laughs> instead. Which is I am Satsuna. Oh my god, I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> Fair enough. All oh, right, moving sorry. Along. Oh, one more thing. Yeah, one There's more also th a gameplay footage demo, but it was a joke. I was so excited for it, and then I watched it, and I was disappointed. It's literally just like, I, hmm? did you watch it? I did see actual footage on oh, did a you? different channel on SwitchPlanet.com, uh, SwitchPlanet's YouTube channel. Oh, I need they to have find that. Very brief, but yeah, there's some in there. Yeah, so the, the, the gameplay footage that I found was literally just a guy jumping across platforms. He was like trying to climb a really tall tower, and he kept falling. And then everybody was like, oh. slapped together Mario. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. like, a, like a game show, but like more terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, Pinball FX3 has been released and there's internet drama because of course there is. It's always internet drama. Internet drama is the best. Uh, so somebody tweeted a picture of the game at uh, the company. I forget the name of the company. It doesn't matter. The company. <laughs> I called the company. Um, And... Comment on how it looked terrible, he said. And then the company, surprisingly, responded with, Yep, it looks terrible. We're formulating a patch to get it up to 60 FPS in handhold, handheld and hopefully bump up docked to full 1080. We're on it. Thanks for your help here. 
I wonder if that's why it got pushed back then. Like like other performance related issues, and they were kind of like, let's not keep delaying this. Let's just pump it out. Yeah, and see what people say. Yeah, that's 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 a reasonable statement. I did that didn't even occur to me. Huh. But just as a note, I didn't actually notice it. I played a fair amount of this, and I can't tell. Um, so I think I think people are just finicky. Um, so who knows? I mean. It's it's also the switch. Like, why I don't understand why people are looking for sixty FPS and four K resolution on the switch. Yeah, I kind um, of agree with with FPS. The FPS one I can get behind. The resolution, especially one, for okay for a pinball, I'll get that. But like, I, I just resolution is never going to be good on this thing. Just get over it. Yeah, never going to be as good, and that's just kind of a it's it's a limitation of the platform. I one hundred percent agree. That's that's the trade off for being able to take it to the bathroom or on the bus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or very conveniently take it to family, which is what I'm going to be doing next week. Oh, oh, I was yes, supposed to talk about it at the talk of the show. Oops. Oh, we'll talk about wow. it at the end. <laughs> yeah, just put it at the end. It's fine. It's fine. So, there, oh, also regarding uh, Pinball FX3, there are free tables until the 19th. So, if you have any interest in that, go download it right now. Um, because Tuesday is when the free tables stop being free. That's there. It's a lot of fun if you. Hmm? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, if you care about pinball, it's a good game. It is a good pinball game again if you care. Which I acknowledge that everybody is. FPS soon, so. Yeah. All right, moving along. Splatoon two patch in January, which means what, Devin? We have a direct confirmed. Woo! I'm hoping for a direct... I mean, because they're going to have to detail this. They said literally nothing, just, oh, it's the 2.2 patch where 2.1 gave us... Uh, or 2.0? I think it was 2.0 gave us Clan Blitz. Um, so this is theoretically a big patch. I believe they still have um, new maps to be rolling out, so we'll probably get a new map in this patch. But, yeah, they have to announce the news somewhere, and I'm hoping it's in a direct. Yeah, okay. But they don't have to necessarily. No, they don't. And they didn't announce Clan Blitz in a direct, so. Let me That's dream, true. okay? Okay, okay. But I mean, there there are there's a lot of evidence to suggest that there will be a January direct. Yeah. Like like before even this, so I'll let you dream. I'll let you keep that dream alive. Until February, you can have your dream. Very well. I'll take it. <laughs> moving along xenoblade 2 patch coming on the 20th which trolled me so hard i was gonna throw some expletives in there because i thought it was already out because we talked about it last show but no it's coming out on the 20th yeah, three days so, uh, take it away what's in there uh yay patch notes we got various bug fixes and glitches there's an easy mode to tiger tiger come on you people like just be better tiger tiger is not hard uh adds improvements to the mini map which okay so this is weird to me they say that they're adding improvements to the minimap, which who knows what that even means. But then they also say there's going to be another patch in January with further improvements to the minimap. I have no. It's terrible, to be fair. No, no, it's fine. You're terrible. just bad. Be better. It's terrible. I, I, the I compass really... is absolutely useless at times. Sometimes it's not even there when you need it. <laughs> just be better. It's not hard. Um, so, but, but even ignoring whether or not it's good or not, I still don't know what this means. How do they have two rounds of improvements to add to the minimap? What could they, what could they do in two rounds of improvements? Hopefully after the second round, you'll be like, why was this not in on release? And then you'll understand. Maybe. We can hope. Uh, That's what I'm hoping for. We're also going to see one more piece of DLC added on the 20th. It's a helpful items pack. I, I just don't know about these. Okay, so the thing about their DLC is you have to buy the whole patch, the whole batch of them. They're releasing through fall 2018. I won't care about this game in spring 2018. Why are they releasing DLC in fall 2018? So, I just... What? What did we... Fall? Wow. I, when, when we talked about this earlier, I didn't realize you said fall. Holy. That's, that's like nine a months. year. Yeah, that's like nine yeah. months away. And it just... I'm not going to care in nine months, so... I barely cared about Breath of the Wild after nine months. Oh, that's actually another thing I did at the top of the show that I forgot to mention is I played through all that, which was great. But, like, I I forgot I had that game until mm -hmm. I got that DLC. 
and exactly. it, because it was Breath of the Wild, I went back to it. If it was anything else, I would not have gone back to that. Yeah, that's that's actually your favorite game of the year, I think. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and you only barely went back to that. Like, I, I'm super torn on this, and this is a bigger conversation for later, maybe. But I don't like day one DLC because that feels scummy. But also, if I buy a game on release, I don't want DLC in fa in fall of the next year because I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna play it. It's just not gonna happen. And it makes the, the DLC pack worthless to me. Um, but you get three overdrives, so... Yeah, so coming back to this, the, the, the helpful item pack that comes out on the 20th, thank you, uh, is you get 30k Ether Crystals, which are the thing you use to upgrade Poppy. You get pouch items for Pyra. You get Nia's pouch items for her. You get 10 rare core crystals, one Lego core crystal, which I don't, I don't actually... I've never gotten one of these yet, so I don't know what this is. And then three so overdrives. And I'm going to buy it for the three overdrives alone. Those I'll are, buy it for that Lego core crystal because I'm just starting out and I want that. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, man, those three overdrives. Those are, those are, I'll, I'll pay 10 bucks in overdrive. Let me just throw in those microtransactions. I'm done. I'm so <sighs> terrified to use any of those that like, I just, I don't care that that's in there because I'll just never use mine. That's fair. It, it's that hoarding aspect where you're like, I can't waste it. I can't waste it. So I'm just not going to use it. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I know how it is. Uh, so that's the DLC pack that's coming on the 20th. Again, you have to buy the whole $30 pack, and it's releasing into fall, so I'm personally go not going to touch this, even though I really like this game. So I'm sad. Um, but again, yeah, there will There's be another, another one yeah. in January. There's another patch in January. We have further improvements to the minimap, as I already said. Level 4 skills for blades. I don't know what these skills are. Are they new combo skills? Are they... New weapon skills? I have no idea what this actually means, but this is what the patch notes said. And then also, you can add Pyra and Dromark to Merc teams, which you get end of chapter three. That's pretty cool. That's that's where I assume that's where you can send them off to do errands yeah. and stuff for you. Yeah, you get like FFT style yeah. missions that you send them out on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And you you can't currently do that. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it for the Xenoblade patch. Alrighty. So Image and Form, which I have been informed is a, is a development team, I Image and Form have made some announcements regarding the Switch. Yep, so first they announced that SteamWorld Heist is coming to the Switch on December 28th. <coughs> oh, I need a cough button. Uh, so <laughs> that's cool. We, that is a turn-based strategy game that is set in the same world as all of their other SteamWorld games, go figure. Uh, it, it was originally on the 3DS, and it was pretty good. It's... Uh, so kind of like, it looks like Worms, as you pointed out, but it's a, a like a tactics RPG with very, um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's, it's fairly close to Worms in combat, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I just saw a quick gameplay of it, and it looked very much like Worms. You can rebound shots off of things, and you, you have to aim, and it looked like you had to, like, yeah, it looked just like Worms to me. But yeah. not, not on, like, an overworld map, it was, like, on an indoor map. Yeah, so it's an indoor map, and then you get new indoor maps. The The terrain isn't destructible, which is, the now that I'm thinking about it, the only big Worms, like, distinction. But also, it's an RPG, so you recruit new dudes, and you give them gear, and they get new skills and whatnot. So, that's a good game. I, uh, I may play it, depending on... No, December 28th. No, I will not be playing this. <laughs> it's just, I'm In so the, overloaded. Uh... In, in the world we have too many games, this one doesn't make the cut? Not as a re-release. I've already played it. Um, so. Yeah, you said that too. Yeah. And I, I want to support these people because I like these games. I, I, I liked uh, SteamWorld Dig 1, and I've been meaning to buy SteamWorld Dig 2, but again, money, games, these are limited quantities. and So. But yeah, that's that game. But anyway. Image Inform also announced they want to further support the Switch next year. What have we got? So I'm reading into this that they're releasing new games because, I mean, we're basically through their back catalog. They have uh, SteamWorld Dig 1, which, I mean, yeah, I guess I can see them porting that. We have SteamWorld Tower Defense, which was a very meh first like step into, real, like, into their world. And then we have a mobile game that I'm blanking on the name of, but it was just like a, a mobile game. We don't need that on the Switch. So I think that this is them saying that they're going to release new content next year. But we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. 
All what right, else we well, got? let's talk about uh, let's talk about some sales for a minute. Switch has sold 10 million units in nine months without a completed holiday season just yet. Holy blank. Yeah, this is a big deal. So as points of comparison, the PS4 did 10 months, 10 million in 11 months, which is with the their holiday that's through a holiday season. And the Xbox One took a year, a full year to hit 10 million again, obviously through a holiday season. So that the Switch is doing so well on release year, what up? I have a question. How long did it take the Wii U to hit that much? I don't even know. Are we even there yet? I think it's definitely there yet, but it's only at like 5 million. Or no. No, it's only at like 5 million total right now or something like that. I, last I saw, I think it was like 3 point something? I, I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but no, it's not there. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> it's still not there six years later or whatever. Um, so this is amazing. They have had severe supply issues and they're still beating everybody else in the current generation like they've got to be so floored Hmm? to be fair in these last six months they lost the playstation 4 because of all the like mad sales and and because ps4 is four years old so it's got a bigger catalog but still and it's as in terms of first year yeah it's killing it which is great i'm 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 glad for this because I've, we've seen we've seen Nintendo go. Oh, this is not doing well. We're gonna slink away with our tail between our legs in the Wii U, and so for it to be doing so well, obviously they're not gonna do that again. So that's exciting. Uh, in the same vein, Super Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart 8, and Breath of the Wild all have an insanely high 50% attachment rate, and Splatoon 2 has a 25% attachment rate. Oh my God! Again. Uh, so. Again, as a point of comparison, the PS4 had a 30 million uh, software sale count at the end of their, when they hit 10 million um, sales uh, systems sold. So through these four games alone, we've got, what is that, 5 million, 5 million, 15, and then 25% is 17, so 17 and a half million sales in four titles. So it, it's, it's doing amazingly. Like, I'm actually amazed at how well the Switch is doing. I... Felt like it was going to do okay early on because of how, like, the the launch was amazing. But I didn't really think that they would be doing better than other people at the same, from the same time period in their release. No, this yeah, is, I fully agree. This is wild. Yeah, it's still crazy to me, like, even Breath of the Wild early on had more sales than the yeah. Switch. That was so silly. Like, what What would it have looked like if there hadn't been supply issues? Yeah, so... Again, anyway. amazing. On to bigger, better news, potentially. Street Fighter Collection detailed. Wow, there's a lot in here, Devin. What is it? What is this? <laughs> I feel like calling it a lot is maybe a bit of a misnomer. Um, is it? It looks, there's a lot of words in there. Yeah, there's a lot of words. So it is Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, which, again, that's a distinct game. Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, again, distinct game. Super Fighter Street Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. I think Colin is falling asleep at his chair. So, the important takeaway here is there are five five editions of Street Fighter 2 and three editions of Street Fighter 3 and then three distinct editions of Street Fighter Alpha. It's uh, I mean if you've got one particular version that you really want, sure. But I, I, I feel like they're, they're hyping it up as they've got 13 games in this pack. And, but in reality, it's, it's, you know, six different copies it's, of Street Fighter 2. It's just, <laughs> it's silly. Did uh, you, like, I don't understand how, I don't, I don't understand why there's six versions of Street Fighter 2. What's, what, what's going on there? Uh, Champion Edition was the one that they used in tournaments. It had... Everything unlocked by default, and they had alternative supers, I believe. Um, and the characters weren't hidden, again, if I remember correctly. So it was like, you could play the eight original characters, and then if you went to the top right character on the thing, hit up twice, and then right once, you would land on Akuma, and you could play Akuma. And, uh, and that was in the original Street Fighter 2. But then in Champion Edition, he's just there. It's not Akuma. I don't actually remember who the secret characters were, but somebody like that. Uh, and so they were 
it was more friendly to just drop into a tournament. Uh, and then they also did like uh, roster updates. I know that in uh, Alpha, Alpha 2 and Alpha 3, they had just bigger rosters. But it's the same basic game. So it kind of feels like you could have just put Alpha 3 in there and it would have been fine. I was just going like, to say, I was just going to say that. So like, what? okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, for completion sake, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a collector, then here you go. Because I'm sure that everybody's got that one that they really played in the arcade or at their home console, and, and that's the one they want to play, even if the next one is quote-unquote better. So. But, but what this does say, Capcom loves the Switch, obviously. Uh, oh, by the way, this release is Yamaha 2018. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, well, that's kind of cool. It is a multi-plat. It's not a, Capcom ex- or not a Switch exclusive, but we expected that. Oh, one more thing. This is the first time that we've seen... I don't remember. Some of these games on the Switch are on a Nintendo platform, so that's kind of cool. If you've been only playing Nintendo games your entire life, now you get to play new games, new Street Fighter games. So. But All in right. other Capcom news... In other Capcom news, they want to port <laughs> more of their back catalog. What, uh, what games are we talking about? Uh, so we don't actually have any direct news. There was some speculation that Dino Crisis was on this, so that... uh. There are probably about 100 people in the world that when they heard this just lost their minds. Just full party in the streets because Dino Crisis, there was, it had a weird cult following even though it was basically Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and I mean, this is a thing. This is a thing that we're seeing amongst everybody. Like Square Enix is talking about it too. And who was it? There was some other person. Uh, the people that make the Telltale. Telltale was talking about wanting to port their entire back catalog. Like, and these developers are really hyped for the Switch, and Nintendo's the nostalgia console, and everybody's giving us our nostalgia, so that's cool. I'm just glad they're finally coming around to the Switch, because this, this was an announcement by their CEO, so. So that's like full adoption officially then? Yeah, their, their, their year waiting period is up, and they can finally support it. Because remember, nobody supports a new console within the year of its release, that's why new consoles have games their first year. I mean, look at the Vita. It still doesn't have support. I think I make that joke like every episode. There was actually, there was a Vita release announced recently. What was it? Help me. We were talking about it off show. We were? Yeah, I don't remember what it was. doesn't matter. It's not important. Uh, was it an emulator to play the Switch? <laughs> the Vita is clearly not powerful enough to, to play the Switch. Come on, no, don't play. That's true. That's true. That's true. Anyway. I just want, I just want a Monster Hunter game because they have it in South Korea now, right? I want that. Why do you do this to me? Why do you hurt my feelings? Well, okay, so I was actually going to say before the show started that like uh, I ha- now that I have a PS4, I can play Monster Hunter. It wasn't World. Yeah, there was like a, there was a beta last weekend. Yeah, I'm super excited for that because that'll be that'll be my first Monster Hunter experience. But then you wrote in here, you wrote this for yourself, just so we're clear. And then I remembered South Korea got this Monster Hunter XX last week. I'm actually excited. I really want to see that. I really hope they do that. Put the English pack in it. Yeah. I over. just want Monster Hunter XX. I just want to play a Monster <laughs> Hunter game. Uh, just to be clear, you did this to you. I didn't do this to you. I know. I was going to move on and just... I feel like nah, it's becoming a bit of a thing that, you know, Devin cries about Monster Hunter XX, so... And Capcom. Yeah, and Capcom in general. I mean, that's... When they stop making poor choices, I will stop complaining about them, but... They still haven't given me Monster Hunter XX, so obviously they're still making poor choices. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully this means that we'll br- they'll bring it, because... I mean, no, because it's a localization issue. It's not even a Switch issue. It's a localization issue. I, I, I just don't understand. Anyway. Look what I started. Yeah. This is, this is what happens. Um, putting a hard stop on that. Hey, game releases. So the first one on the docket is Brawl Out. Oh, it is a 1999. It comes out on the 19th, so two days from now. It is a Super Smash Brothers clone. Uh, and they're they're that's not me being mean. That's they're leaning into this. They're saying yes, we are we are the party fighting game for the new generation or something like that. Uh, I'm pretty excited for it. So. This is one of those games that I struggle with, uh, as we've talked about in the past. It's one of those that I, in my head, I know it's probably not going to be worth the money, but at the same time, I want it. Oh, uh, just a couple of other feature things. It'll play in 60 FPS at both modes, which is, it's one of those 
yeah, it's it's, it's important in this one of these words. This is one of the genres where that's actually important and it matters. So that's nice. But yeah, I know that that this is. I, I probably stop playing this within a couple of weeks, and I have too much crap to buy anyway, so I shouldn't. But I, I know do it because I'm gonna do it. If I if I can find people to play it with, I will love it. Like. This is the sort of thing that, that I can be happy, you know. My little brother gets home and he's like, I just want a potato on couch. And it's like, yeah, let's play Brawl Out kind of thing. But I, I, need, I need people like that. Because as soon as, as soon as everyone in my life stops playing a game, I stop caring. Look at uh, Fire Emblem Heroes. By the way, you're a jerk. Um, I'm just saying, the, the choices <laughs> they make in that game, I don't even want to begin. Uh, this... I want Smash Brothers so bad, and this is it's it's a skinned Smash Brothers game at sixty FPS. I'm for twenty bucks. Yeah, I'm I'm sold. This is, this scratches the same itch that Tiny Metal will scratch for Wargroove, and that's why I'm going to buy both of these games. Plus, uh, plus Lost Sphere. You just buying all the games this week? You want to? You want to? Like the, the the wound is open, and you have salt. And you just you have to pour it in there. I I do I do. It's oh my god. Yes, I mean we'll see i don't i probably will cave because there's you know a month of time for me to cave my current plan is to not buy it because it's 50 bucks but we'll see you know yourself we'll better see. than that don't lie i oh man, don't even <laughs> i get i get a weekly allowance and i can buy it every week between now and then yeah i mean we'll see you're just gonna have six copies of lost spheres what you're saying <laughs> the problem is Dissidia also comes out around that time. Dissidia NT for the PS4, so mm. maybe I won't. You may have self-control. No, I may have accidental self-control by other releases. Fair enough. So yeah, this is one that we want to play. Hopefully we can play it online. Yes. I know that it does have online features, let me be clear there. So Yeah. We should buy oh, it. Which honestly, if it didn't, I wouldn't at all. Yeah. 100% wouldn't. That's the the, the breaking point. Yeah. Uh -oh. You're a jerk, and I hate you. Okay, moving on to more games that I want to buy. Uh, all right, next one on the docket, Tiny Metal. You don't want this at all. So this is take two for Tiny Metal for anybody new. Uh, this was supposed to release, what, mid-last month? Is that correct? Do you uh, I feel like it was late-ish, but yeah, yeah, somewhere, yeah. like mid-late. Somewhere in November. Uh, it is going to be around 25 bucks. Uh, the, so somebody asked the developer on Twitter, and that was the last we heard. It will release on the 21st of December, so this Thursday, because uh, Nintendo likes to, uh, Thursdays. It is a turn-based strategy game in the vein of Advance Wars, kind of like Fire Emblem, but not in RPG. There's not RPG aspects to it. And Yeah. What else is there to say about that? No, oh, there's a lot to say about it, but we're going to keep it, you know, not... <laughs> we're going to keep it drama-free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. I'm excited for it. I'll play it. I liked Advance Wars. I like Wargroove that's coming out 2018. And this will Sometimes. scratch that itch all out, brawl out for Smash Brothers. Yeah. All right. Next one up Blossom Tales. What's that? So I talked about this actually on the show when it was uh, announced originally. It is $14.99. It comes out on the 21st. And it is. It is, it is to Super Smash Brothers, or to uh, 2D Zelda's what Brawl Out was to Super Smash Brothers. They are unapologetically stealing from, inspired by, sorry, let me, let me be clear on my wording, from that era of Zelda games. It's got, I, I, I don't know if you remember this, I sent you the intro video for it with the music playing, and I was like, just listen to the first 30 seconds of music, what do you think? And you were like, this is clearly Zelda. And, yeah, uh, it's like synthesized Zelda music. Yeah, so yeah. they even use one of the same uh, fonts for their logo that one of the early Zeldas used. So they are, again, unapologetically inspired by 2D Zelda. And it just, it looks so it's, good. It's not a bad thing, yeah. I want it, it so looks bad. Fantastic. Yeah, they, it's, it's got that very timeless sprite feel to it that just looks amazing. And it's always going to look amazing, come at me. Uh, oh, doesn't, doesn't Harvest Moon use sprites? So anyway, uh, the next one on the docket is Crawl. What's Crawl, Devin? Uh, Crawl is it's a fourteen ninety nine game that is releasing on the nineteenth. It is a isometric dungeon crawler. So if you if you've played one of the two D Zeldas, it's kind of got that same, um, like here's a room, 
you hit the edge of the map, and then you go into the new room over there, that kind of thing. It's an action game. And then if you're playing it single player, it's kind of lame. If you play it with other people, you get one person gets to play the hero, and then everybody else tries to kill the hero with the various monsters that you possess in each room. And it it's so compelling. Like it's such an interesting play, like a uh, play loop. It, it's a perfect party game if you at all are into that kind of thing. Because uh, yeah, so so your your player you you kill stuff in the dungeon. As you kill stuff, you level up your character, and then when you hit level ten, you can go fight the boss. Whoever hits level ten first, you know, or whoever kills the boss wins the match. And yeah, so it's just like a little little contained competitive experience. And it, it's it's a re-release of a oh god I don't know it was on PC I don't know about the other stuff I apologize and it was it was a lot of fun on the PC so I want it so player player two d- uh, dies turns into a monster and starts attacking player one if player two kills player one then does player two become a new player character or is that does he just work on ending the whole round uh, in the instance of four people player two does not automatically become the hero. But one of the other players does become the hero. Oh, okay. So it's so you're not trying to sink the ship. You're trying to become a hero player again. Yeah. And, and redeem yourself. Okay. Okay. And then you, yeah, get to continue to advance down the, the path and level up. And then if you hit the end, you win. But if you die, somebody else gets to try it. So. The maps looked very uh, Link's Awakening. The the NES gold cartridge. Yeah. Is that Awakening? The gold, the gold NES cartridge for for Legend of Zelda. That's what the maps looked like to me. Mm-hmm. the The character models themselves looked kind of like, kind of like Kingdom. Yeah. For the seven people out there who've played Kingdom. Kingdom yeah, it looked really cool. And if I had any friends at all here in Dallas, well, I guess McKinney, then I would play it. But yeah, this is so I don't formulate full thoughts here. When this released <laughs> on the PC, they were they took a principled stand against online multiplayer. They said, yes, we thought about it. Yes, we were considering doing it. But no, we're not going to do it. We want to advance the couch co-op experience. We want people to sit down on their couches and play this together. And so we didn't see an online version. If we see an online version of this, would you consider it? Oh, absolutely. For 15 bucks, Yeah. All right. I'm, I need to research that because I really want to play Crawl with you. I feel like... To go, your mark, 15 bucks, real quick. Yeah just like eh, this week this can be ramen week we'll be fine <laughs> no that's that's a whole separate budget i just have a video game budget and it gets eaten alive every week yeah i mean as we've seen on this list you're you're three of four at this point i think blossom tales you don't care about but so it's rough all right last up dragon fang z as sad <laughs> as i am to say that what is dragon fang z Devin? Let's uh let's let's tell that story because that was amazing. So I don't want to I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> As we were doing the notes, he goes Dragon Fighter Z, Drag Dra- Dra- Dragon Fighter Z. It's like Colin, do you need to go clean your pants? It's like yes, but no, it's not Dragon Fighter Z. First of all, Dragon Fighter Z isn't even due out in until uh, January on the PS4 and whatever else it comes out on. But I've been I've been on their Twitter page, Bandai Namco's Twitter page, every day going, yo, uh, so switch, right? Switch port. We're gonna we're gonna do it, right? You said if I bought Xenoverse, you'd you'd, you'd port it. <laughs> I bought I bought Xenoverse twice. P- port, please. Please to give, yeah. Didn't so when I saw Dragon a capital F and then a Z at the end, I was like, What? But Didn't anyway. Bandai Namco have a uh, event recently? Uh, that would be up to you to figure out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't. I don't remember if it has or hasn't happened yet. I know that they were planning on on uh, revealing a few things. I think it's next week. Okay. Yeah. Because I didn't. I didn't see. I don't follow Bandai Namco specifically, but I didn't see any news about it on the various Switch sites I follow. So. Yeah, they they said something like um, they're gonna re- uh, five. I think they're gonna release five t- or announce five titles. One of them is obviously gonna be um, Metroid Prime Four. Whatever that is, because they, they previewed that a couple times. They have Metro Pride form? Ben and Amco's doing Metroid? I, maybe I'm wrong. Don't fact check me. I'm pretty sure that's who it is, though. I didn't even know that was but announced. Any- wow, I'm a bad bad person. Oh, yeah, sorry, moving anyway, on. Anyway, anyway, Dragon Fang Z. What is Dragon Fang Z? 
It is a $25 game, $24.99. It releases on the 19th, and it is a very traditional roguelike. It is grid-based. It is turn-based. You explore dungeons. When you die, you lose your character. It's a roguelike. There's a note in here on the notes. Why are there five different games I want releasing this week? Because I have been dying for a real roguelike on the Switch. I feel like something like uh, Dungeons of Dreadmore, I'm, I'm totally getting off into an esoteric path that only I care about, but deal with it. Uh, something like Dungeons of Dreadmore would be really good on the Switch, especially the handheld version with the touchpad. This, this system is made for this game or for this, this genre, and we just don't have any good ones. And this one is less traditional in the like art style and the way it looks. It's very cutesy. It's very anime. I don't know if you looked at it at all, but it's like sprites. I, I know it's not I your bag, so. Yeah, but it's not your bag, so. Um, it's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. You like Mystery Dungeon, didn't you? Oh, that's this one. Yeah. Mm. That's a roguelike. That is a roguelike. When I say roguelike, that's what it means. When you say roguelike, I think I, I think Binding of Isaac and Nuclear Throne. And Those Enter are the Gungeon. Rogue lights, L I T E, in that they have uh, roguelike elements, but they're not actually roguelikes. The distinction is kind of important because of this conversation. Yeah, big time. I, I Dragon Fang, I like. I really, really liked uh, Mystery Dungeon games a lot, and I'm not. I'm a, I'm kind of a big Pokemon fan, but that wasn't really even what it was about for me. I just enjoyed it. Uh, well, for twenty five bucks. Yeah, it's a little hefty. I'm I'm gonna watch reviews before I make a decision on this. But if this is gets anything resembling positive feelings from like roguelike people, I don't care about. Uh, no disrespect, I love Nintendo Life, but if Nintendo Life loves it, I don't care. If a roguelike person likes it, that's when it's important because that's a very important distinction between, you know, a roguelike fan would look at Final Fan or uh, Final Fantasy Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and say that's a little light for a roguelike game it's not dumbed down yeah yeah it's it's very much so a dumbed down version and i don't want i don't want pokemon mystery dungeon i want the real experience so i'm going to be watching like roguelike people to talk about this because again i really really want a good roguelike for the switch um but yeah that's there i will probably be tweeting about that by the way if i find any good news about it so look forward to that if you follow Moving on from that, do we want to do a like longer term Xenoblade Chronicles? Let's do some live show planning. Do you have anything yeah, to say? I mean, uh, I feel like I said everything I wanted to say about it in the pre-show. It was, you know, the the compass is confusing. It's really rough around the edges, but it's still somehow very likable underneath all that. And that's all I really have to say about it. Do you want to talk about how you feel about the characters so far? Oh my god. No. <laughs> Because I don't, I don't want to turn this however long episode into a two hour long episode. I just, I, all I'll say is I really hate when J Japan throws double D's on their characters and thinks that that's enough character. <laughs> that is it's, the character development. Like, like the the sword with the double D's on it was perfect. That somebody stitched together in Google. She is. She gets a little bit better. Um, there's stuff that you don't know about that makes her a better character. I don't. I don't care what kind of development she has. This is in my face constantly. The camera loves to show you, remind you that she's got a, a fantastic pair every three seconds. And then, and then, forget her. The blue one, uh, Moria's Moria, Mora, whatever. Her blade is the same thing. Like, why? Why is this a thing? Why? Why couldn't they be more like Nia? Nia, who is fully clothed except for her inner thighs. Her whatever, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, it's like, Japan. And, and Fire Emblem Heroes with their, with their armored Tharja <laughs> unit this month? For, like, what are you doing? Stop doing that. Stop doing this. It feels like a... Like a wow, my voice cracked. Um, it feels like a culture thing. Like It feels like this is just how they... It has to be. Yes. Yeah. It's maybe, disgusting, though. Maybe it's just more okay there. I don't know. I mean, clearly, because... Because it's a thing, and, you know, Tharja is... Those gangbusters, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. Just as my own personal update, I'm still enjoying it. I We will eventually, once I get further through it, and you probably give up on it, because I think you're going to give up on it at some point. We'll see. We'll see? Okay. Uh, see what that update brings. 
Um, eventually, we will do a full like spoiler deep dive where we will, if you want to avoid spoilers, stop listening right now. Um, we're obviously not there yet. I do want to say I'm continuing to enjoy it, and I'm. So I did the restart, which I talked about last week, and in like five hours, I was back where I was because I was skipping all the cutscenes. It's a lot of cutscenes. Um, but yeah, look forward to that full-on Xenoblade Chronicles talk. Oh, one more piece of show news that again I should have thrown at the start, and I might I might actually record something and throw it at the start uh, next week, Christmas week. We will not be recording on Sunday. We won't be recording until TBD, but I think Wednesday is the current plan. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. So Wednesday is the current plan. It'll go up Thursday. We may not do a show the following. I don't know. This is it's going to be a weird period. We'll have to. We'll figure something out, and we will tweets about it. But yeah, that's us. On to the outro. If you want to email the show, you can do so at desyncnerds at gmail.com. If you prefer Twitter, Twitter. If you prefer Twitter, you can tweet at the show at desyncnerds, or at either of us individually, as we talked about at the top of the show. I am at Kulana, K-U-L-A-N-A-H, and he is at Anukshuk58, I-N-U-K-S-H-U-K-5-8. If you want to help out the show, you can rate us, and review us on iTunes, on Stitcher, on TuneIn, on Google Play, or on Play po- no Google Play Podcast. Sorry, that was all one sentence. Uh, I said you can catch us next Sunday, but immediately, just a moment ago, I said that that was not true. Uh, we will probably not do the next episode live. The VODs will be up on YouTube, though. We Our channel is Desync Nerds. We also, as I said again at the top of the show, have a Patreon. Come find us there. Also, come talk to us on Discord. Thanks for listening, everybody. Peace.